Today on Network Freaking Marketing Radio, we're going to talk to Mr. Dr. Bill Andrews. Are you tired of the old ways of trying to recruit friends and family to your MLM? Tactics that just don't work anymore. Have you wanted to quit and say the heck with this? But something still gives you that burning desire to rock this business? All you needed was the way. This is Network Freaking Marketing Radio. Bill, how are you doing? Oh, very good. And, and, and please call me Bill. And okay. I, you're the first person that's called me Mr. Dr. Bill Andrews. Yeah, I know. It's, you know, yeah. it's sometimes Bill's, when you Bill's do those intros. Friend. Yes. So, you know, I'm a big person. Your CV is is pretty remarkable, and I'm going to let you just kind of in your two sec, you know, your twenty second pitch, tell us about you because you're going to tell it better than I will. Well, I I don't like calling it a pitch first because I'm not trying to market anything, but it's uh, uh my I've just been obsessed my entire life with trying to find a way to cure aging. I think aging is involved in every disease we've ever heard of uh, in one way or another. Um, at least the likelihood of, of getting the diseases increases with age. Um, and so I've just been focused on that all through high school and college. That was, I was known for somebody that was just interested in learning more about what causes aging. Um, and uh, it's just been my focus. I've, I've just never distracted from that. Um, now you got your PhD from University of Georgia, correct? Yes, I did. And it's in molecular population genetics. That's, that's a, pretty broad yeah molecular and population genetics okay is the thing. it's it's so it's mostly about the uh studying how genes function how they turn on turn off uh how they're processed that's the molecular part and then the other population is the evolution of it so <clears throat> how did we evolve the things that we have now and like one of the things that i spent a lot of time working on is how did we evolve an aging process you know, why, why do we age? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's something that somewhere along our pre uh, predecessors, pre-human situation, um, there was an evolutionary advantage to aging for the species. And, uh, so. you know, aging is something that unfortunately affects every human being and every animal in the world. And Actually, no, Actually, no, there's animals that have no detectable aging. Right? Really? I, I talk about those a lot when I, when I call it that, that's I always say I'm going to cure aging, which means I consider aging a disease. And one of the reasons I think it's a disease is because there are, there are animals on this planet that have no detectable aging that includes lobsters, humpback whales, uh, tortoises, clams. Um, and uh, uh, you can like, there, like there's no rings on a tree kind of thing you can count um, in most of these animals, but clams do have uh, a, a get a new stripe every every year, and they found clams that are over 500 years old. <clears throat> There's one famous clam clam named Ming because she was born during the Ming Dynasty. It's amazing, you know, to see that. Now, you know, aging can be defined as many different things. How do you define aging in your scientific realm and the in the industry you work within? Well, first, yeah, aging can be defined, and that's why there's a lot of products on the market that uh, tell them they say they cured aging only because they reverse some particular biomarker of aging, and all they've done really is reverse the biomarker. They haven't reversed aging at all. But I, I actually, I, I, in a lot of my presentations, I, I start off with defining what I consider aging, and it's a very broad definition. I just show a picture of Betty White when she was. Uh, 25 and again when she was 95 and I say <clears throat> what goes from that picture to that picture that's what aging is and I say I can't define it I don't know you can if you want to give me a list of all the different changes you see go right ahead but but I want to reverse that whatever that is I want to reverse it so I don't know I mean a lot of people are feeling necessary to come up with a definition for aging but when the average person sits in on their couch uh, staring in the air and thinks about aging, they don't think about, oh, how long are their telomeres or how, how many methyl groups they have in their DNA or uh, what's their hormone levels or, or their NAD levels. You know, it's like they're thinking they don't want to become uh, inactive. They don't want to lose the ability to be as 
run as fast as they used to or, or have as much energy uh, and you know a lot of different life things that are great. They, they don't want to see a decline in those. Um, but boy, that's, that's the best I can do is explain it that way. <laughs> you know, you're, 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 you're studying. We're going to get scientific here for all the listeners here is in really telomeres. And you would describe better to the main people what a telomere really is. What is it, first off? <laughs> well, first, let me first say <laughs> that it's not, it's not my main focus. Aging okay. is my main okay. focus. Um, I think of aging as like we have multiple sticks of dynamite burning inside of our cells. And which stick of dynamite has the shortest fuse? Okay. And so I believe that the one with the shortest this fuse is the telomeres, even though I study all aspects of aging. I'm trying to conquer this telomere shortening problem first with the idea that there might be other fuses that got to be put out later. Okay, so so it's it's not, I, I am a telomere biologist, but only because of the fact that that I've decided after years and years of just studying aging that that's where we got to go first to solve the problem of aging. But telomeres, they're, they're found at the tips of our chromosomes. Um, they are, uh, I, I use, I like the analogy of, they're like ride tickets at an amusement park, okay? So, <clears throat> and you have these tickets at the end of your chromosomes and every time your cell divides, a, a ticket is ripped off. And your cell divides again, another ticket is ripped off. At any particular time, you can stop and you can count the number of tickets there, there are and you'll know how many tickets you've used and how many tickets you have left to use. And that's, that's something that's only been true in the last like 30 years that we've been able to measure aging by measuring the number of tickets or measuring the length of the telomeres. Um, and still the, the methods to measure it are not very good. So we, we only get, it's only useful really in studies where you're doing large studies of a lot of people to show some type of correlation, but it's, it's very difficult to measure telomere lengths. But it, it is, it is something that, that, does correlate strongly with aging and lengthening them has shown reversal of aging in some animals. Now, when you say reversal of aging, does that mean like if I'm, you know, I'm 42 years old and if the science was here and caught up with you today and you had all the perfect things, is it mean that you would be able to actually reverse the aging process to where I could actually go back 10 years, my face would start changing, my hair would change colors, or is it more of a, we can freeze this time and this, it's not going to go any further than it is right now. It's the damage already done. Well, we're venturing in the unknown. So we don't know. Okay. Yep. We have to first lengthen the telomeres and ask that question. But my, I wouldn't be surprised if everything you just said was reversed. Okay. One thing that I want to make clear is that we're not reversing development. Okay. When we reverse aging. So you wouldn't go back to being a baby. You would go back to being about 25 at the, at the youngest. Okay, because that's pretty much when development stops, mm -hmm. or ninety percent of it stops, ninety-five percent of it stops. Uh, so we're only, and then after that, all you do is age. So we're reversing aging, not development. Uh, but but I I I know that in the mouse studies that have been done, uh, there has been reversal of hair color, uh, uh, reversal of just about everything, especially brain function, uh, athletic ability, um, <clears throat> uh, all those things got done by. Uh, uh, lengthening telomeres and um, <clears throat> nothing else. No, no other theory on aging has ever, ever been able to do all that. Uh, you know, you hear about other, other things that you can take to uh, reverse aging, but excuse me, all they do is reverse a biomarker. Does it open up Pandora's box though? You know, you, you think like when you start being able to reverse the process, I mean, that's the beginning of, you could possibly reverse the onset of what disease that happens, inflammation within the body. I mean, it could be one of the largest discoveries in science in the last hundred years if you're able to accomplish what you're trying to do. Yeah. Well, I think it'd be the biggest medical breakthrough of all time. I don't mind saying that. But the <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's. I mean, people have been wanting to cure aging since before Cleopatra. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, there there could be some downside. Okay. Uh, again, we don't know. Um, I mean. I, I can say it, it's probably not going to be increased inflammation. If anything, curing aging is going to decrease inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I forget what some of the other things you said are. But uh, it's it's the bottom line is that the problems are now. Aging is a terrible problem. 
Okay, people don't realize that. And you, if you watch like the doctor's TV show, there's an episode where I'm on there, I talk about this. There's people in nursing homes, assisted living homes and hospices, that are too old to take care of themselves. They're miserable, they're unhappy, they can't leave. Their family doesn't come visit them. It's a miserable existence. And most of us don't even know about it because these people are, be, are in nice looking apartment complexes that are really disguised <laughs> uh, places for like uh, uh, assisted living homes. Um, <clears throat> so we don't know about it, but that's what we got to get rid of now. And, and let's say 200 years from now, after we've had aging cured for 190 years, <laughs> let's say, uh, it's people aren't going to say ban the cure for aging. Yeah. Okay. Because nobody's going to want to go back to where we, what we have now. Um, there, but there will be problems. There, there's going to be overpopulation problems. There's going to be how will the how will the young ever get jobs if the old don't retire problems. Uh, in lots of in, in social security, how will we support social? Security? I mean, when you're thinking on that level, that's that's going way beyond where. But it's amazing yeah. to where you you really got to kind of think that whole broad picture. You know, if you can just freeze time for people, my gosh, is that just an amazing theory and stuff like that in regards to you know do you think telomeres and being able to extend them could help people that possibly have uh, paraplegic and stuff like that do you think it all plays into like the stem cell regeneration and all that kind of stuff i was curious about that well it, it depends on why you're paraplegic i mean even stem cells can't solve the problem if the stem cell population is exhausted and gotcha. if, if stem cells don't have the ability to differentiate into new neurons uh that have possibly been cleave by a, a broken spine um <clears throat> but the um but there's a lot of things so anything that anything that could be repaired by cell division mm -hmm. should be prepared be, be uh, uh fixed by uh lengthening telomeres wow okay so it's uh because the biggest the only reason to keep telomeres long is to allow cells to keep dividing the problem is when the telomeres get really short the cells stop dividing and so we run into everything, all all kinds of diseases. If through your research, what do you think the uh, the human body is designed for? I, I mean, how many years do you think these bodies we have are realistically designed to last? Uh, <clears throat> theoretical maximum of 125 years, and only if you have the perfect genetics and lead the perfect lifestyle and don't get run over by a bus. 125, that's not a bad gig, but, you know, it would suck the last 25 if you're bedridden and not being able to do anything. The last 25 would be pretty bad. Uh, and uh, um, the, the nobody's ever lived to be 125 because nobody has the perfect lifestyle or, or, or perfect genetics. Uh, and so it's, but, but, but by keeping the telomeres long, people won't go through that health decline. That's the plan. I mean, I'm, Animal studies support that, and sort of in vitro studies support that, but we actually haven't lengthened telomeres in a human or even prevented their, their shortening in a human um, <clears throat> completely. Okay, so so we won't know until we actually do that, and we've got a few years before we're going to have something that potent. Is that, you know, I was reading on your well, your telom telomerase uh, enzyme that you guys have developed. Is that the forefront of the technology that is in the future you see that would actually allow humans to extend their telomeres? Yes. Uh, there's two ways to lengthen telomeres. One is using the enzyme telomerase, and the other is called the ALT pathway, which is alternative lengthening of telomeres. It's a, but that's the ALT, ALT pathway is more of a mutation kind of driven process that, that occurs a lot often in cancers. Um, we don't want to induce the ALT pathway because that would require uh, mutations possibly um, but the the telomerase method is is seems like the most feasible anyway it's it's we already have this gene for telomerase and for some evolutionary reason we shut that gene off well before we were born what age okay. do you think it's shut off at or have you has the science shown to okay actually okay so getting deep into the science it's actually shut off before you even conceived wow. okay it's it's shut off in the primordial germ cells of your parents Okay, well, the primordial germ cells produce, the primordial germ cells are the cells that produce the sperm and the egg. Okay. And so when those primordial germ cells start to differentiate into sperm and egg, that's when telomerase is shut off. So the children get born, are, because of the fact that 
uh, cells are going through meiosis instead of muscle mitosis, uh, there is no telomere shortening because there's no DNA replication. So as a result, the, the sperm and the egg will have telomeres just as long as the primordial germ cells. So then the, the sperm fertilizes the egg, the cells start to divide, and that's when you start having telomere shortening. Somewhere around like a blastocyst stage or something like that, eight cell stage, eight or 16 cell stage, one of the cells will start to produce telomerase and that cell becomes your primordial germ cells. So, it, but it doesn't, it doesn't become any part of you except for your primordial germ cells. So people that suffer from short telomere diseases actually have the disease because their parents had the mutation. What are some diseases that would be? Well, practically everything, including Alzheimer's. Uh, and, uh, uh, but the most common ones are like just keratosis congenita, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, idiopathic infertility, uh, aplastic anemia. There, there's, wow. there's a ton of them. Um, the, uh, uh, I could, but I, like in my presentations, I practically say that there's not a disease that isn't caused by short telomeres anymore. And I call them all telomeropathies, which is not a word I coined, but, but I, I'm, I'm one of the only people that call practically every disease there is a telomeropathy, uh, diseases caused by short telomeres. Um, so yeah, everything. It's, it's, it's incredible. Now, if the, if the technology was here today and we were caught up and you had the ability to be candidate number one, to jump into the science that you're been put your life's work into, would you take the venture to see if it would work? Well, no, I wouldn't. And the main reason that I wouldn't is because of my experience in a lot of clinical studies. Okay. I, I've been involved in, a, in the development of a lot of the big biotech, biotech breakthroughs uh, that have been gone through clinical studies. And first in human is always like a gamble. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always, you don't know exactly what to do. It's always a risk. So I always say, <clears throat> so, and in fact, if you listen to even, even this, I mentioned I was on the doctor's TV show. I talked about the risks of being in a first in human study but I, in a lot of my presentations, I, I talk extensively about that. And I always say, when the risk of no treatment is greater than the risk of treatment, that's when you want to get treated. Gotcha. Well, right now, my risk of dying from aging is so low that I wouldn't take the risk of trying something new that nobody's ever tried. Even though the technology, I'm not worried about telomeres at all. I'm not worried about lengthening telomeres at all. I'm worried about the doctors that are administering the drug somehow one way or another, making a mistake. Okay. Because of lack of experience. Um, and that's, I I've seen that happen a lot in studies. I, I, the word oops <laughs> comes up. Well, I mean, it's pioneering science. It's a part of, you know, so many people forget that what it takes to bring a drug or, you know, a cure to something to market. What's your take, you know, just a flip side, what's your take on the MRNA vac right now that's out there from Pfizer and all these big guys? Do you think? Let me answer that. But let me just point out one thing. Um, in my talks, I always talk about how the fact that if you're a healthy 89 year old, uh -huh. you have an 11% chance of dying before you're 90. That's a high risk. So if I was 89, I would take the treatment. Gotcha. Uh, the other thing is Alzheimer's. Everybody who has Alzheimer's dies within five to six years. Okay, so again, I would take the treatment if I had Alzheimer's. Okay, so uh, on the subject of the RNA vaccines, I think that that's a, a very smart way to go. Uh, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Uh, I'm, now I'm, again, I'm very worried about how fast these were developed and, and how uh, uh, not enough studies have been done to really verify that it's safe. But I, I agree with the fact that it should be administered to the high risk people. Um, but I think if you can exercise social distancing to the max, like I do, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's better to not get vaccinated. So I think the risk of getting vaccinated might be greater than the risk of not getting vaccinated. It's interesting. I wasn't planning on that question, but it kind of, you know, played into what we were talking about in real politics today, you know, that play into the world that we're in today. So you, you're a long distance runner. The average person cannot do 100 miles in the conditions and the altitude I mean, some of your stuff is 18,000 feet, which is, you know, you're, what, 5,000 feet below the death zone in some of the stuff that we've read. Yeah. Do you attribute that to the lifestyle and the science that you created to give you the ability to do that? Very much so. 
Okay. But I, I, but I believe everybody can. Okay. okay. So I, you said most people can't do that, but that's only because of their lifestyle, not because of their genetics. Um, I believe that, that, uh, uh, anybody can run a hundred miles if you learn how to run and keep it fun. Okay. And I always say, you know, when I'm teaching classes on running and things like that or to, speaking to audiences of runners, I always say, you know, quit trying to push so fast, just run, have fun, take a camera, take pictures, um, get obsessed with nature, what's over the next hill, what's around the next corner. Uh, and then when it starts becoming a struggle, stop. That's when you start getting inflammation is when you start pushing yourself on that struggle. So I said, when it quits being fun, quit, save it for another day. If you take that kind of mentality, you, you'll find that, boy, month after month, you fart, you're, you're going farther and further and further. Um, and uh, so it's uh, without, without having any displeasures, you know, enjoying every minute of it. And, Shows uh, so much mind over matter. I mean, it's like it's, it's what, 80% of mental game, they say, 20% physical? Yeah, it, it's it's. But it's it's not it's not such a it's not a like mental. They usually say go into some kind of like trance to ignore the pain. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about don't 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 go into a trance. Just keep it keep it fun, keep it easy, so that you don't get into a situation where you're, you're taxing your body. I mean, running. We're we're born to run. We're 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 evolved to be great runners. Okay, as long as we don't uh, push it and cause inflammation, and inflammation causes damage. Uh, and that's why a lot of people can't do that. People say the only people that can run at my age are the people that started late in life. That's because if I had been running when I was all my life, I would be a wreck right now with damaged knees and hips and things like that. But I have been running all my life. I've been competing in races since I was 10 years old, all the way through high school, college. Uh, and uh, but it's, it's always been it's always been my favorite type of running was just adventure, just going out explore i like running long distances just to see what's over that mountain in front of me you know that kind of stuff uh that that's keeping me that keeps me from being inflamed so many people just don't take the time to enjoy the smaller things in life that's yeah to enjoy the running yeah. <laughs> enjoy the you know you know you've through the studies you know you've come up with like was it 15 proteins or markers in the that can actually help the human body to uh maybe stall the telomere is that the right way to put it um the way i understand i'm trying to understand what i was reading so yeah i don't know i'm not, I'm not certain what you're referring to uh but we have we have uh i would say over a thousand different things that affect telomere lengths um and they range from all kinds of ways from things that protect telomeres from damage to things that lengthen telomeres um and to, and there's different ways of doing that that are, I mean, you know, I have to say a lot of these things are toxic because they have other side effects and things like that. So, uh, but uh, uh, at least it's a tool for studying the whole effect. And then we have ways of delivering telomerase to cells using gene therapies uh, that are super expensive. They're like a, it costs like a million dollars to treat one person once. Um, <clears throat> that'd be my cost, not the patient's cost. Uh, but uh, it's like, yeah, there, there's, We've we've studied everything about telomeres, um, and uh, maybe you're thinking about things that uh, uh, that are are considered safe enough to take. I don't know. It's yeah, just, may possibly. You know, there's there's things out there. What do you? Well, let's just go there. What is the one thing that, or the one? What's the out of your studies? What's the one thing that would people you would advise people to take or use or do to? lengthen or to try to reverse the aging process? Well, anything that reduces uh, oxidative stress, psychological stress, um, inflammation, um, all those things, do, do all those things. Quit smoking, lose weight. Uh, those things will help uh, protect. And then do anything that has been shown to actually lengthen telomeres. And there's, there's a lot of different things that have now been shown to actually cause the production of telomeres to lengthen telomeres. So the science is there. There is certain things people can take to lengthen them. Well, it's, it's, it's like a tug of war. Okay. So, and I, I use this analogy a lot. It's like, you've got things causing you to age and then you've got things 
causing you not to age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but in our bodies in humans, we only have the one sided tug of war. So pulling to, to cause us to age. Now, when we add something or we do something to our lifestyle that makes it so that we start reversing aging, that doesn't mean, so we have people on both sides of the tug of war. That doesn't mean you win the tug of war. You can still, you just slow it down. So even though this side is pulling to reverse aging, it's not as strong as, as the side that's pulling to cause you to age. I don't know. That's a hard analogy to do. It's tough because, you know, it's like you're pulling one way, you're pulling the other way. But there is, there's the, the, the technologies there. How far do you think we're out realistically before there's a huge breakthrough? Not like reversing the aging process completely, but being able to see something that's like mainstream. How far do you think the science is? Before well, well, surprisingly, it's not science that's the issue. It's like, it's like there's so many different things that we can do is almost certainly that one of them will work. The problem is the funding, okay? The funding to do all that work. Um, and so that, that's the biggest struggle. But if, if suddenly, if suddenly, you know, I had a uh, hundred million plus dollars in the bank to do the research and not just telomeres, but telomeres and other things too, I think, I think I could have something that would reverse aging in less than three years. So it, it's, it's, it's not, that's, 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 you know, we, we, I've been saying that for 10 years, but it's always the um, funding that's been the obstacle, not it's doing the science. If, 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 we, if I could do all the things that I, I know of from learning from my own studies and other people's studies um, and none of it worked, then we're never going to cure aging. Okay. Do you think uh, we could cure cancer today with the proper funding? I, I, yeah, absolutely. I think I, and, and proper guidance too. Um, the biggest problem is that uh, most of the cancer researchers are focused more on getting publications than they are on curing cancer. And that's the big problem with the publish or perish uh, phenomena that exists in the academic environment. But <clears throat> it's like tremendous amounts of money set aside for cancer research is actually wasted on other research uh, that are disguised to be cancer research. But it's, it's I, I do believe that we could have cures for cancer. Even my own company, we've, we have two different methods that we've designed to treat cancer that I think would be really effective. Uh, but we, we haven't been able to get the funding to, to test them out. And, you know, I was, I was national inventor of the year, second place for national inventor of the year in 1990. <clears throat> in 1997 for my cancer research. So I do know a lot about cancer. You know, guys, anybody that's out there that wants to cut a check and help humanity, Dr. Bill Andrews is looking for $100 million. It wouldn't be that hard to uh, pony up and give him some grants and stuff like that. His website is Sierra Sciences, correct? SierraSciences.com. How many books you got on your belt now? Three and a fourth one underway. But you... uh, believe me, I don't. I don't do the writing myself. My co-author writes them because I'm too busy doing the science. You know, it's, um, it's unique. You see a lot of scientists, and I've talked to quite a few. There's very few that walk the walk to the level that I've spoken to that you do. And, like, you're really in the trenches, and you're not worried about the, the glamour and all the other BS that comes with it. You're really out there to really change humanity. I don't know anybody else that's like me. I mean, I know a lot of people in the field, but they're they're – uh, very focused on marketing products and they're very focused on speaking engagements and things like that. Whereas I just, I try not to do those kind of things. I try to just focus on the science. I, you know, I don't ever want to make a penny if it's not from curing aging. Okay. Um, Huge give back to the world. We thank you for that. You know, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's sick. That, and curing aging is only one after, after, you know, after I cure aging, I would expect that I'll start making a lot of money. To <laughs> it's okay. To, it's to okay care. to make money on doing something. It's the way the world goes around. You work hard. You play hard, you know? Yeah. No, no, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I would feel, I would feel depressed if I was suddenly found myself filthy rich, but hadn't cured aging. Wow. Okay. I mean, it's impressive. So Bill, we do a section on this show called the gauntlet. It's 10 rapid fire questions. It's brought to us by Contact Mapping. If you want to learn more about Contact Mapping and way to never forget someone, head over to ryanpanel.com forward slash map. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask you 10 questions, rapid fire, and I want you to answer them the first thing that comes to your head. Sound good? Okay. All right. Talking or texting? Talking. Okay. Favorite day of the week? Saturday. Favorite city in the U.S. you lived in? 
Athens, Georgia. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes. Last song you downloaded? Never. Beer or wine? Neither. Car or truck? Truck. What scares you? Um, nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's, okay. that's, that's my first answer. Who would you haunt if you were a ghost? Uh, no, my, nothing comes to mind. Okay. Fill in the blank. At what age do you want to retire? Never. Invisibility or super strength? You cut out. Invisibility or super strength? Super strength. Okay. Last one here. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? <laughs> no. We always break it up at the end and have a little fun there. That was just getting to know you and a little bit about it. Bill, your science, I got to tell you, is uh, remarkable. And people need to tune in and kind of watch where you're going. So um, we want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day and coming on our show. Anything that we can help to promote you? Do you have a title of your new book coming out? Uh, nothing really. The, the only thing that, okay, so I would say the way that people could help me is to, uh, because I don't really want to bring in investors, mm -hmm. but we have made a lot of discoveries that I call go-to-market partnership opportunities, where somebody could start a company, like, for instance, uh, uh, having a, make, creating a pet food additive, okay, that would help their dogs, cats, or horses uh, lengthen their telomeres. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, we have these things, like, like right in this wall behind me, on the other side is a lab, okay, and it's, I've got 10,000 square foot of labs here, but a lot of it is sitting with things on the shelves that are just could be great products. Now I've, I've put together a go to market partnership opportunity plan where if, if somebody wanted to take one of these things and put them on the market, uh, I'd let them do it. All I want is 10% gross profits in, in return to fund our research. Um, <clears throat> because our, that's most of our funding comes from product sales from things that we've discovered, or at least we advised on, uh, and, uh, 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 that funds all, all of our research so that I don't have to rely on investors. And so we've got like, I think 20 different things that I've listed in a go to market partnership plan. That's actually on my website. If people go to my website and find go to market partners, um, <clears throat> they can click on that and they can see a document that's about 30 pages long that describes each of these opportunities. Um, and, uh, that that's the best way people could help me because Funding, as I said, is the obstacle, and this would be a way of providing funding without having some investor coming in and then taking over and heading us in an entirely different direction. I, um, or, or be more focused on us getting some breakthrough so they can sell us, sell the company for a profit. That, that's the kind of thing that would, that's why most diseases never get cured, just because that's what happens. I'm trying to prevent Animals, that they say, the money animal. Bill, I really want to thank you for coming out. And, you know, guys, if you know someone that's in the VC, you know, or looking to start something, reach out to Sierra Sciences or contact us on the show. We know how to get in touch with Bill. And Bill's website, he's easy to contact. It's Sierra, SCI.com. And Bill, Sierra Sciences com. Either one. Yeah. Excellent. Bill, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Hey guys, it's Ryan here from Network Freaking Marketing Radio. If you like what we're doing, head over to iTunes and give us a like. 